Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. A couple of weeks ago, I did a live meetup with the Prismic team where we recreated Alicia Key's site from the ground up using Next.js and Prismic. We started from a brand new Next.js project. We then integrated Prismic into the project. We created these slices and sections that you can see over here with the use of the new slice machine. We then ended up at the end adding these cool animations where these sections slide over on top of each other, just like how the original Alicia Keys site looks like. I'm going to include the link in the description for you guys. You can go check it out. It's in the live section of the Prismic site itself. And in this video, I'm going to walk you over from a high level of what we actually did in that project. Now, if you're not familiar with what Prismic is, Prismic is the headless CMS. CMS is a content management system. It just is like a database for your content. It has uh, a, an editor which is hosted for you where your content editors, bloggers, and marketers can create uh, pages with the slices that you as a developer provide for them. And the way you build those slices or sections is with the slice machine where you can define the React code representing that specific slice or that specific section. Now, the headless part is because all of this content managed uh, in your Prismic account is then exposed via an API, which means you can couple it with any front-end technology that you want. In this case, we used Next.js or React to create our front-end application, but you can consume that API in any front-end technology that you want, and that's hence the headless part of it. So let me just jump into the code and from a high level again show you um, what I have done over here. Now I do have a video on the channel um, talking about using Prismic in Next.js. You can watch that. You can also follow along with the meetup with you because in that live session we do also explain everything about integrating Prismic into Next.js and uh, you have the added ben benefit of uh, extra team members from the Prismic team. Uh, we had a product lead from the Slice Machine. We had the CEO of Prismic, Sadek, and we also had Alex, which is the developer advocate at Prismic. And they all kind of contributed to the different aspects of you know, creating this project and what Prismic is and how it makes it easier. Uh, we talked about the uh, features that we have in the slice machine and, and it's a great video you could just follow that along but from a high level as you can see here on the left hand side we have a next.js project where we used slice machine which is a local development tool like a server that you run locally on your machine that allows you to build different content types or custom types which represent pages and then slices that you can see on the right hand side which represents different sections of your site so for example we created this home page which is this home page we just looked that together and then on this home page as you can see as a custom type we had some static zone which is you know fields that don't repeat in a page this can be title and description for a page and it had a slice zone where you can include uh, different sections or provide different slices for your content creators uh, to pick and choose from these uh, slices. I'm going to dive into one of these uh, slices and then I'm going to show you the Prismic Editor where your content editors or content creators or writers can actually use these slices that you have uh, coded here to create different pages. So. Every custom type, which represents kind of a page, has these slices. And if you go to your slices, you can see we have two different slices here. One is the hero, which is this section you see up top over here. This is our hero section. And then the other slice that we have over here is a single media highlight. These are these highlights that have a media inside of them. It's an image over here. It can be either a full screen image, as you can see down here or it can be an image with a border so if we go into the hero slice we can see every slice has a repeatable zone or a and a non-repeatable zone again fields that don't repeat in a slice for example in this hero we have the title description and image these don't repeat uh, and then we have a repeatable zone which is uh, 
which which is an in this case doesn't have any field but you can imagine if if i had like a call to action slice where i can had uh the option to have either one button or two buttons that button could have been a repeatable element or a field because you can have many of it or if you have an image grid where you can have multiple images then that's a repeatable field versus uh, these non-repeatable fields which only happen once in a slice so one title one description in this case one image now if i go back to my slices and to the single media highlight it's kind of similar it all has non-repeatable fields there's nothing that repeats in this slide we have a title description image and a link a each of these slides have a link that when you click on it takes you to a different site but what we have here on top of what we had in the hero section is this theme and the theme is just changing the background color and the text color as you can see some of them like this one has a gray and white kind of light and dark theme this one has a brown and blue this first one we saw is a blue and yellow so this is the theme that's controlling what happens in the text color and the background color and Another thing that's different in this specific slice is this variations that you can add. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have two variations for this slice. One is a full width image, so it goes all the way. The image is stretching. And the other one, which is the default variation, is just the image being centered with some padding around. Now, this variation uh, allows you to easily read this ID of the specific variation that the content creator is using and then change the styling or the way that the image looks inside of your code. This eliminates the need for you to create multiple slices that are only different with how the image looks. So if this variation wasn't there, for example, you had to have a single media highlight with a full background slice and then a different slice. Or you could add more fields to this one and say, if you want a full width image, add it to a full width image field down here. Let's say I have another field over here. And then if I have, if I want a regular image, just add it to a, a, an image. So there are different ways to do it. But if you have different fields here, then it becomes harder for your content creators to know which one of these fields they have to actually fill because um, there's multiple of, of them, for example, in this uh, case. But this variation eliminates that need uh, for creating more fields in one slice to then just uh, use it to style it differently. And it also eliminates the need to create multiple variations of a single slice and have multiple slices if, if you, the only thing you just want to change is just how the image looks. So variations are great. Again, in that video, uh, we explain how we use this. So definitely go check that out uh, to that section and you can see how we're changing the code um, based on the ID of this um, variation. Now, another thing cool about this slice is that as you can see, uh, on each slice, you can actually generate a screenshot because this slice machine comes with a slice simulator which uses dummy data to create your slice and make it look the way that you've styled it in your code that we're going to see in a second but this helps you to first of all create this slice without having any data because at this point we don't even have any page any content created yet on our prismic editor so just to show you what I mean, on the Prismic site, you would have this hosted editor where it's just the content of your site. So for example, I have a homepage here. I have created this page. And on this homepage, which is a, um, an instance of our homepage uh, custom type, I'm giving it a title, a description, and I'm selecting a hero section and a couple of these single media highlights, which we're going to look at in a second. But before even I have any content here, with the use of the slice machine and the slice simulator, 
using dummy data to create these slices without having any content. I can just see and um, fidget around with how my slice looks like. And once I'm happy with the style and the code and the whatever um, component I'm creating in my code, I can take a screenshot and share this screenshot or push it to the Prismic editor. So when they when they want to create a slice, for example, at a, a slice here, they can see how these slices will look like. Um, instead of just seeing these names, they can see what exactly this slice would look like. Now that we are inside the editor, let me actually quickly show you that variation that I said. So, for example, this is a single media highlight section or slice that I've added to the page. As you can see, I've selected a theme for it. There's different themes I can select. There's a title, description, an image, and a link. But you can also see that I have a variation over here. So if I select this variation, I have two different types. One is a full width. I don't have any... Uh, I didn't have any um, image pushed to my editor with this variation, but you can also push different images uh, for variations. So therefore, when your uh, content creators are selecting between different variations of a slice, they exactly know how they would look like. But this is what I meant. So you can have the default, you can ha have the full width without having to add any other fields here or any other slice. Uh, to make your repository convoluted with so many different slices uh, or, or confuse your content editors, you could just add different um, variations. Now let's jump back to VS Code and, and see the code over here. Now while you're creating slices, fields, and custom types in the slice machine, you can push this Save to File System button to save it to your project actually. And then from there, you can push it also to the Prismic repository where you can see the images and the slice names and fields and stuff. But let's examine what does it mean to save this specific slice to the file system. If you go to your code base, you can see this slices folder where, where it, it maps to the slices that I have in my slice machine, the hero and the single media. And inside of these slices are the React component representative or responsible for rendering that specific slice. This is where you can read the data coming from Prismic, read the fields, and actually style your component the way that you like. Once you're happy with the style here, you can simulate your component with the slice simulator, take a screenshot, push it to Prismic. So whoever is writing, building pages on the content creation side, they can just pick and choose from the slices and they know how exactly they look like. Now, in terms of setting it up, again, I have a video on the channel. I'm, I'm going to link it somewhere in the card. You can also follow along with the Meetup video where we explain how exactly you would start from the ground offsetting Prismic with Next.js. But from a high level, you can see there is this SMJSON over here where we are defining our uh, you know, repository. We have this Prismic IO where we create a Prismic client which is going to help us fetch uh, the data from our Prismic repository. And just to show you our homepage over here, if I go to pages directory and inside of our index, which represents our homepage. Now, as you can see on this page, I'm using get static props to fetch this specific page from Prismic repository using this client we created. So client.get single, I'm getting the homepage and I'm passing this page data as a prop to my page component. I'm done. Then getting this page prop and sending it to this slice song component. So this slice song component is a component coming from Prismic React. All you need to pass to it really is an array of slices and a components object, which is a mapping of your React components responsible to render the slices that you have defined in your slice machine. So let's see where this components is coming from. So components is coming from our slices. If I go inside the slices, you can see in this index.js, I'm exporting this components object where I'm uh, actually mapping the name of the slices defined in Prismic to the actual component that's responsible for rendering it. So that's what we need to send to this slice song component. Together with the, an, an array of slices which is coming from our page data. So the data that, I, that we fetched in the get static props. We're going to send it here and we're going to get the slices out of it. We pass it to this. And with that, we're going to actually render these slices one by one on the page. 
but you can also see at the end for uh, the actual animation Alex is going to use green socks for the home page for these sliders and the way that they kind of scroll on top of each other uh, he uses green socks and he's, he explains how he's doing it there I'm also using uh, frame motion on this header section and I touch on how we're doing this too um, there is a link to the source code included in that video I'm going to also include it here so you can watch that watch my content watch the prismic video that I have on my channel to kind of learn how we built this cool site and the cool thing about it is that at the end you're going to end up with a site as cool as the one that Ali Shakis has that's a wrap for this video folks if you have any questions hit me up in the comments I'm also getting close to launching my Next.js course so if you're interested in learning Next.js check the link below in the description and I'll see you in the next one bye bye